Let's talk about trains. Okay. Globally speaking, rail is six times more energy efficient than roads, emits nine times less CO2, and causes far less casualties too. That's impressive. It is, which is why rail is an essential ingredient in the recipe for a decarbonized transport system. How do we do that then? Modernization. Upgrade of infrastructure and new lines are key to increasing the mode share of rail. Great. When do we start? Well, Japan started in 1964 by building the first high-speed rail system. Since then, Asia has added more than 30,000 kilometers of capacity, 27,000 in the People's Republic of China alone, more than the rest of the world combined. That's impressive. The rollout of conventional lines and urban rail systems has also been spectacular in Asia in the last decades. Countries like India, Indonesia, Kazakhstan, Malaysia, Thailand and Vietnam have ambitious plans to build or expand the rail systems. How come? Because current customer demand sits at 900 billion passenger kilometres per year and growing. And in densely populated countries with high passenger density corridors, Rail services can be both affordable to build and viable to maintain. What about freight? When it comes to freight, the trajectory is slightly different. The needs are there and the benefits of rail freight are proven, but only a very limited number of countries rely on it. Despite that, Asia still leads the world in rail freight, carrying 7 trillion tonne kilometres annually. Brilliant! Well, there's always room for improvement, which is why ADB is proactively serving as secretariat for two major investment programs. CARIC, a partnership between 11 countries and development organizations that has mobilized 40 billion US dollars in investments since 2001 to establish multimodal transport networks. These include 2,000 kilometers of new railways and 3,500 kilometers of improved railway in Central Asia and SESEC, which does much the same in South Asia. So, we're done? Not quite. We can't talk about rail in Asia without touching upon urban mobility, transit systems, and commuter rails. Obviously. Since 1990, nearly 10,000 kilometers of rapid transit systems has been built in Asia. This is a huge and extremely commendable effort and yet that is clearly not sufficient and far from meeting the transport demand. In fact, 1.37 billion people in Asia are left without any access to rapid public transit. So the efforts should clearly be accelerated, building on the solid experience acquired and the quality project developed in the region. Definitely. The ADB supports integrated and sustainable urban mobility planning and finances a variety of urban mobility projects. These include a series of large-sized commuter rail projects or even mega-projects. Mega-projects? Some of the signature projects are in India, like the Delhi Mira Regional Rapid Transit System, and the Philippines with Manila's North-South Commuter Railway. All projects promote integrated transport corridor solutions, clean modes, latest technologies, and inclusive design. In view of the multiple challenges and needs before us in Asia, the Asian Development Bank and its partners are strongly committed to support the transformation of the transport sector in the region. We really need to take action and face the urge to meet the increasing demand and help achieve international agreements in Asia and the Pacific. That goes hand in hand with an increased focus on rail-based solutions and urban transport. In this context, and consistent with the ADB Strategy 2030, our transport portfolio is already shifting from conventional transport infra infrastructure financing to more railways and urban transport projects. Developing transformational and innovative projects together with our developing member countries and private sector clients. Let us collectively remain committed to that ambition. We have an immense task before us and I strongly believe that everyone has a role to play in this.